draw the relay logic for this machine that will control this machine. I told you about that guy that wrote his mother a letter. Huh? Yeah. Now, he said, I'm writing this letter slowly because you cannot read fast. Now, I'm going to do this also slowly because you must understand this relay logic. Right. I'm starting with what happens if I press the start button. So I've got the start button. Forget about that, forget about this. We will look at that later. But, when I press the start button, a relay gets power. That relay must operate the gate. So let's give this relay the name GT, which is short for gate. That is line one. Line two has got a normally open contact that belongs to that relay. So if that relay gets power, this will close. And this will operate the gate solenoid. That is the gate solenoid. So line one and two is the gate control. Okay? Now, what happens if the job is on the gate? It comes here. We must measure the height and the weight. So, line 3 is the height switch. Now, tell me, by looking at this drawing, when will that switch close? If the object is tall or if the object is short? Yes? When it is tall. So let's give this relay the name Relay Tall. So this relay it will get power if the object is tall. But now, when it moves here, it's not touching the switch anymore. But it must remember that the object is tall. So this is a latch. Relay tall. Let's just go through this slowly. If that switch goes, that means it's a tall object. That relay gets power. This will close because it belongs to that relay. Right? And then, current can flow here. So even if the switch goes open, the relay will still have power. Okay. Now, that is the height measurement. Line number four is exactly the same. But now it is working on this switch. Now when does this switch close? If the object is heavy or the object is light? If it's heavy. So let's give this relay a name. Heavy. And we latch it. Why do we latch it? Because it 
must remember that the object is heavy, even if it's not closing that switch anymore. You follow? Right. Now, people, this is doing the measurement. That is doing the measurement, like three or four. Now we come to the very important two lines, line five and six. Line five. I'm first going to draw both lines and then explain them to you. This is the very important two lines in the drawing. Right. First thing, do you see that these two contacts belong to this relay? Right? These four contacts belong to this relay. Okay. Let's just get something clear again. If a relay don't have power, it is in the normal condition. That means then the, con the contacts are in that the state that it's given. That one is closed, this one is open, closed, open, closed, open. That is that the relays don't have power. The moment the relay gets power, the contacts change. That means if that relay has got power, that will be open, this will be closed. If this relay has power, that will be open, closed, open, closed. You must understand that principle. Without power, the context of the relay is in the normal state. That means like it is in the drawing. The moment the relay gets power, they change. Okay. Now, I'm going to use color chalk. If the object is short, what happens to this relay? Does it get power or not? It doesn't get power. So if the object is short, that is closed, this is open. So current cannot flow here for short ones. Current can flow there for short ones. Do you agree? Okay, so I'm going to write here that current can pass here if it is short. Now, if this relay gets power, what type of object do I have? Tall one. What happens to these contacts? That one goes open, this one closes. Where can current flow? Line 5 or line 6? Line 6. Current cannot flow in line 5 if it is tall. So current can flow here if it is tall. Okay. Now, the same here. It, when will this relay not have power? If the object is heavy or if it is light? If it is light. Where can current flow if it is light? There. There. So let me write here. Light. Light. If it is heavy, what happens? This relay gets power. Right? Those four contacts change. 
So then current can flow there and there. Heavy. Right. Now, tell me, when will this relay get power? If the object is what? Short and light. You see it? When will this relay get power? Short and heavy. This relay will get power if it is tall and light. This relay if it is tall and heavy. This is the classifier. Now all of this, line 3, 4, 5 and 6, happens here when it passes these switches. Then it moves on, it is touching switch 2. So line 7 is when it touches switch 2. Right. What must happen if it touches switch 2? It must do the painting. Isn't it? So let's call this relay when it touches switch 2. Relay paint zone. PZ, paint zone. It's going to start painting when it touches switch 2. But when it's here, it must still paint, isn't it? But it's not touching switch 2 anymore. So we latch so that it can keep on painting. Okay? Line 8. Relay paint zone. So this contact will only close when it touches switch 2. And now, this is an interesting one. Green. 
All the tall light ones will be painted blue and all the tall heavy ones will be painted red. This is the paint drum. Now, what happens next? That conveyor belt is moving. So it's pushing it past the paint area. And then it's going to touch switch link. So line 9 is where the touch is switch link. Line 9 is when it touches with 3. What must happen if it touches with 3? One of these four flaps must move to push it off the conveyor belt, isn't it? So it is entering the divert zone. So let's give this relay the name. Relay divert zone. And we latch it. Why do we latch it? Because that flap must not move back. Say it is that short heavy one. When it moves here, when it touches, that flap moves. Now when it is here, it's not touching the switch anymore. That flap must stay there until it falls off. But there's one more thing. When it touches switch three, what, what must happen with the painting? It must stop. So, this here is relay divert zone. So when it touches switch three, this will go open and it will stop the painting. Okay. Now, line 10 is basically the same as line 8. If it is in the divert zone, then I get here relay short light, relay short heavy, relay tall light, and relay tall heavy. And here we've got the four solenoids that will open the gates. The four solenoids that will move those flaps. So this is the short light flap. This is the short heavy flap. Tall light flap. and the tall heavy flap. Again, because only one of these four will have power, only one of those will be closed and it will move only one flap. So this, by 9 and 10, is the divert So. Now, what happens if it falls off? It closes switch 5, 6, 7, or 8. So line 11, we take switch 4, switch 5, sorry, switch 5, switch 6, switch 7, and switch 8. And we put them all in parallel. And if any one of them close, we know that it is clear it's off the conveyor belt. So let's call this relay clear. What must happen if it falls off the conveyor belt? That flap must go back. So, 
we remove the power so the flap that was moving can go back. The next thing, these two relays have been remembering that classification all the time, but now there's a new job coming on. It must stop remembering the previous job. So, when it is clear, it must reset the height switch, it must reset the weight switch. And what else must it do? It must put the new job on the conveyor belt. Relay clear. So when it falls off, relay clear puts power on the gate again. To start the new job. Only one more line. If it passes through and it touches switch 4, so this is clear. And if it touches switch 4, line 12, then there is an error. And if there is an error, it must not put a new job on the conveyor belt. It must prevent the gate from working. What I want you to see very clearly is line one is not a latch. Because this contact does not belong to that. That is a latch. That is a latch. Uh, that is a latch. That is a latch. Okay. Line one is just parallel logic. It's not a latch. Just to go back to page one of the book, where we say the logic system consists of input, logic, and output. Where's the input here? All the switches, start button, night switch, wait switch, switch two, switch three, and these switches. That's the input. Where is the output? The things that do work. What is doing work? The gate solenoid, the paint solenoids, and the divert flaps solenoids. Those are the outputs. Everything else is the logic. In any circuit, it's easy to see the inputs, it's easy to see the outputs. Everything else that you don't mark as input or output, that is the logic. That means all the relays and the contacts that belong to the relays. Those are the forming the logic. Right, I repeat, for the test and for the exam, you don't need to learn these sketches. I give you this sketch, I give you this drawing. We call this a ladder diagram. Why? Because it looks like a step ladder that you climb up. Okay? It's called the ladder diagram. I give you the ladder diagrams, I give you the machine. So, what am I going to ask you? Count with me. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37 switches and contacts, right? Now in chapter 1 I say to you, switches and contacts can have errors. Two types of errors. What are the two types of errors? 
either they don't close or they close and they don't go open again. Right? So any of these 37 switches and contacts can have a problem of staying closed. So 37 times 2, 74 questions that I can ask you on this drawing. <laughs> I see the people are saying, wow. But people are going to go through all 74 questions with you in the next period. This period I just wanted to introduce to you. But let me explain to you what the questions will not ask you to explain exactly this order of what things happen. The question is, what will you observe? You're standing next to the machine. That switch goes wrong or that contact goes wrong. What will you see with your eyes happening there? 